Hello, it's Willie from the Ozarks, and we're ready for our last day of September's lesson. September 30th, Lesson 273 out of A Course in Miracles Workbook for Student, the original edition. The stillness of the peace of God is mine. The stillness, the stillness of the peace of God is mine, is mine. It reminds me of a a, a, a beautiful lake I one time saw, and you all have probably seen them too. Um, it was a mountain lake, and um, and it was, it was there was no wind, and it was it was kind of sheltered, and it was just still. It was like you. I was looking. I was looking up, up from a hillside, looking down at it, and you could see the reflection of the trees on the other side, and they were just like a perfect silhouette. You couldn't even tell where the trees that were upright blended into the trees that were in the water, <laughs> the, 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 the picture, the mirror. But it was so still, and I thought, man, there's the picture of peace right there. So you guys look for that, okay? The stillness of the peace of God is mine. Perhaps we are now ready for a day of undisturbed tranquility. Perhaps today... Perhaps we are now ready for a day of undisturbed tranquility. If this is not yet feasible, we are content and even more than satisfied to learn how such a day can be achieved. Wow, isn't that nice? He's here, he's saying, perhaps today you can have a day of undisturbed tranquility. And if that's not yet where you're at, if you're not, you haven't reached that awakening level yet, well, at least what you can do, you can say, if this is not yet feasible, we are content and even more than satisfied to learn how such a day can be achieved. And remember, that's what we're studying, how we can have just that kind of day, all right? And keep in mind, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the miracle-minded part of our, our perception, perceptual world in harmony, you know, when when it's when we're miracle-minded, when our perceptual world is in harmony with love, which is our true identity that's changeless, then transfer between the two is possible. So that's where we want to get to this this uh, place of abiding peace, an abiding joy. All right, so. Uh, so we we are working. We, we should at least, even if we can't be there today. We can at least be content. There's a good step in the right direction, isn't it? We can be content and even more than satisfied to learn how such a day can be achieved. If we give way to a disturbance, let us learn how to dismiss it and return to peace. So let's learn, learn how to dismiss our disturbance and return to peace. When you, know, when you notice that you've dropped from peace and you feel that that familiar feeling of uh, upsetness, say, up, oh, time to stop and ask for help and be quiet and still, open my mind and find the answer. Can I practice forgiveness? What did I just think of that's not a way that God would think that ripples the water and makes it not peaceful? We need but tell our minds with certainty. The stillness of the peace of God is mine. And nothing can intrude upon the peace that God himself has given to his son. And the prayer says, Father, your peace is mine. What need have I to fear that anything can rob me of what you would have me keep? I cannot lose your gifts to me. And so the peace you gave your son is with me still. In quietness and in my own eternal love for you. <laughs> My own eternal love for God, which, you know, we see God in everyone. How can you say you love God whom you have not seen if you can't say you love your brother whom you have seen? Okay, so we see God in everyone and we're learning to not let anybody ever disturb us. No perception, no um, interpretation in our own mind is in disharmony with their, with their beingness as a love being also same as us. Okay, the stillness of the peace of God is mine. And uh, I think I'm starting to feel it starting to rain. Hopefully we can finish this lesson before I get rained on. <laughs>
Anyway, let's go. I've got a tree over me that'll stop it for a little bit, huh? All right, let's see. Uh, lesson That was lesson 273. We're ready to go to our text reading. And it's the last section of chapter 6, Attack and Fear. We're on Be Vigilant Only for God and His Kingdom. And we are ready for 92, but we're going to start with 91 and finish the chapter. So if you want to turn there, while you're turning there, let me tell you about this plant I've got here. It's a, it is a white snake root, uh, common in Missouri. And um, I'm pretty sure it's the uh, Agaratina altissima. Agaratina altissima. There's also an Agaratina aromatica, which I don't think this is what this one is, but it could be. I'm not exactly sure, but let's let's assume for the sake of our own studies here, and I'm pretty, I'm, if I was going to lean, I would lean on that it's an altissima, the, the species, and so we're going to call that the white snake root. The aromatica species is the lesser snake root. Uh, root poultices have been used on snake bites. Probably how it got its name, wouldn't you think? So uh, making a poultice on a snake bite to help draw out or to uh, maybe they're to draw out or to neutralize the toxins of a snake bite. It's been used for that. Uh, it says here that the smoke from the burning green leaves has been used to revive unconscious people. And I found this on, uh, oh, it, oh, it's also uh, toxic it due internally due to trimetol, which is a complex alcohol. So um, keep that in mind that it does, it, it, and they say that, that both animals, you can even have a cow that grazes on this stuff and it eats too much of it. And then you milk, its milk can make you nauseous. So uh, anyway, so so it's probably not recommended to make it actually as a food, but it might have some very good medicinal qualities. Um, plants for a future says the root is diaphoretic, even though it is uh, has some toxins in it. It's still been used for medicines as far as plants for a future has researched found. Uh, the root is diaphoretic, diuretic, febrifuge, stimulant, and tonic. It's been used to treat diarrhea, diarrhea, gravel, and urinary diseases, used in her herbal sweat baths to encourage sweating. Uh, a tea has been used to treat a fallen or inflamed womb, and the root's been chewed to relieve toothache. So there you go. Uh, that is uh, the white snake root. All right. Let's uh, take a look now at paragraph 91. This, the third step is thus one of protection for your minds. Now let's back up to 90. You learn first that having, rest, having rests on giving and not on getting. Next you learn that you learn what you teach and that what you want to learn is peace. This is the condition for identifying with the kingdom since it is the condition of the kingdom. You have believed that you are without the kingdom and have therefore excluded yourself from it in your belief. It is therefore essential to teach you that you must be included and that the belief that you are not is the only thing that you must exclude. <laughs> I, love I just love the way that he thinks. Thank you, Jesus. 91. The third step is thus one of protection for your minds allowing you to identify only with the center where God placed the altar to himself. We've already said that altars are beliefs, but God and his creations are beyond belief because they are beyond question. The voice for God speaks only for belief beyond question, which is the preparation for being without question. As long as belief in God and his kingdom is assailed by any doubts in your minds, his perfect accomplishment is not apparent to you. This is why you must be vigilant on God's behalf. 
The ego speaks against his creation and therefore does engender doubt. You cannot go beyond belief until you believe fully. 92. Transfer, which is extension, is a measure of learning because it is its measurable result. This, however, does not mean that what it transfers to is measurable. On the contrary, unless it transfers to the whole sonship, which is immeasurable because it was created by the immeasurable, the learning itself must be incomplete. Let's listen, let's listen to that again. Transfer, which is extension, is a measure of learning because it is its measurable result. This, however, does not mean that what it transfers to is measurable. On the contrary, unless it transfers to the whole sonship, which is immeasurable because it was created by the immeasurable, the learning itself must be incomplete. Immeasurable, uh, limitless is another way of looking at that. It's, it's immeasurable. It's created by God and it retains the Godness of it, which is limitless. Immeasurable, he's calling it. To teach the whole sonship without exception demonstrates that you perceive its wholeness and have learned that it is one. Now you must be vigilant to hold its oneness in your minds because if you let doubt enter, you will lose awareness of its wholeness and will be unable to teach it. (laughs) 93. The wholeness of the kingdom does not depend on your perception. Wow, that's good to know because we sometimes perceive incorrectly. The wholeness of the kingdom does not depend on your perception, but your awareness of the wholeness does. It is only your awareness which needs protection since your being cannot be assailed. Yet a real sense of being cannot be yours while you are doubtful of what you are. This is why vigilance is essential. Doubts about being must not enter your mind, or you cannot know what you are without certainty. Certainty is of God for you. Vigilance is not necessary for truth, but it is necessary against illusions. 94. Truth is without illusions and therefore within the kingdom. Truth is without illusion illusions, and therefore within the kingdom. Everything outside the kingdom is illusion, but you must learn to accept truth because you threw it away. You therefore saw yourself as if you were without it. You were without truth. That's how you perceived yourself. You took an identity that believed that you were limited and lacking and without truth. You've taken illusion to be your identity and home in many, many ways. By making another kingdom which you valued, you did not keep only the kingdom of God in your minds and thus placed part of your mind outside it, outside of God's kingdom, because you valued something else. Remember, we're learning to value what's valuable. And if you find yourself valuing things that are not valuable, well, it's time just to stop and ask for help to re-perceive them, to see them as valuable, the way that God sees them. Everything's valuable. What you have made has thus divided your will and given you a sick mind, which must be healed. Your vigilance against this sickness is the way to heal it. Your vigilance against this sickness, this, uh, this way of seeing that's outside the kingdom, that's according to illusion, not according to truth. Your vigilance against this sickness is the way to heal it. Once your mind is healed, It radiates health and thereby teaches healing. This establishes you as a teacher who teaches like me. Won't it be nice when we're (laughs) we're doing that? He has so much faith in us. Isn't it amazing? Vigilance was, let's read that again. Once your mind is healed, it radiates health and thereby teaches healing. This establishes you as a teacher who teaches like me, says Jesus. Vigilance was required of me as much as of you, but remember that those who will to teach the same thing must be in agreement 
about what they believe. 95, the last paragraph we'll read today, the end of the chapter. The third step then is a statement of what you want to believe and entails a willingness to relinquish everything else. Let's read that sentence again. The third step then, which is what is the third step? Be vigilant only for God and his kingdom. The third step then is a statement of what you want to believe and entails a willingness to relinquish everything else. I told you that you were just beginning the second step, but I also told you that the third one follows it. The Holy Spirit will enable you to go on if you follow him. Your, village, your vigilance is the sign that you want him to guide you. Vigilance does require effort, but only to teach you that effort itself is unnecessary. Isn't that something? We're going to use effort to teach us that effort itself is unnecessary. Because once you're in the divine flow, you just follow guidance and you're always happy and you just effortlessly do what is, uh, what is God wanting you to do, what is, which is what yourself wants to do. You follow your own desires and you work in perfect harmony because you've learned to listen to the voice, the one voice, the voice of peace. And you're being a good teacher of peace too because you're listening. You're teaching what you want to learn. Okay, uh, let's back up. Uh, your vigilance is the sign that you want him to guide you. Vigilance, or <laughs> vigilance does require effort, but only to teach you that effort itself is unnecessary. You have exerted great effort to preserve what you made because it was not true. Therefore, you must now turn your effort against it. That's that upside down world. The kind of the twilight zone, the bet, you know between the the two the two worlds, between truth and illusion. We're, we we thought that illusion was true, and so we're seeing the truth upside down. But as we get reinverted and see the truth is what's upright, then we start saying, "Well, I don't really need illusion because it never brings me joy and peace anyway." That was our lesson uh, the other day: is that uh, we're to choose peace or choose. Um, well, I, I can't turn to it quickly, but I, I, I can't quote it perfectly to you. Uh, but it was just a day or two ago that we, we were to choose uh, that piece. Therefore, you must now turn your effort against it. Only this can cancel out the need for effort and call upon the being which you both have and are. This recognition is wholly without effort since it is already true and needs no protection. It is in the perfect safety of God. Therefore, inclusion is total, and creation is without limit. Okay, so we'll be ready tomorrow for the consistency of the kingdom, starting our October 1st. We'll read the introduction tomorrow. All right, well, that was that was been nice, hadn't it? Let's just re recap that the, 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 the three points to keep in mind as we are uh, uh, making our progress is that uh, number one in uh, what would you call that in the only answer is to have give all to all secondly to have peace teach peace to learn it and then lastly be vigilant only for God and his kingdom okay all right, now let's go take a look at uh, what is the Christ. What is, or is it, no, it's what is the world. Uh, am I, no, I'm, I'm sorry, I turned to the wrong page. Yes, uh, lesson 273, the stillness of the peace of God is mine. mine. What is the Christ we're going to read now? And that um, the two lessons prior that I was referring to is yesterday's lesson, how can illusions satisfy God's son? And before that, Christ's is the vision I will use today. So, you know, that's the upright perception is Christ's vision. Okay, what is the Christ? Christ is God's son as he created him. He is the self we share uniting us with one another and with God as well. He is the thought which still abides within the mind that is his source. 
He's not left his holy home, nor lost the innocence in which he was created. He abides unchanged forever in the mind of God. Christ is the link that keeps you one with God and guarantees that separation is no more than an illusion of despair. For hope forever will abide in him. Your mind is part of his and his of yours. He is the part in which God's answer lies. Where all decisions are already made and dreams are over, he remains untouched by anything the body's eyes perceive. For though in him his Father placed the means for your salvation, yet does he remain the self, who like his Father knows no sin. Home of the Holy Spirit and at home in God alone, does Christ remain at peace within the heaven of your holy mind. This is the only part of you that has reality and truth. The rest is dreams. Yet will these dreams be given unto Christ to fade before his glory and reveal your holy self, the Christ, to you at last? The Holy Spirit reaches from the Christ in you to all your dreams and bids them come to him to be translated into truth. He will exchange them for the final dream which God appointed as the end of dreams. And what's that? The atonement, forgiveness, when it extends to everyone and everything. For when forgiveness rests upon the world and peace has come to every son of God, what could remain to keep things separate? For what remains to see except Christ's face? And how long will this holy face be seen when it is but the symbol that the time for learning now is over and the goal of the atonement has been reached at last? So therefore let us seek to find Christ's face and look on nothing else. And we behold his glory. As we behold his glory will we know we have no need of learning or perception or of time or anything except the Holy Self, the Christ whom God created as his Son. All right. Um, let's take a look now at um, the stillness of the peace of God is mine again. Perhaps we are now ready for a day of undisturbed tranquility. Oh, I hope that's true for each of us. If this is not yet feasible, we still have something else we can do, even if that's not yet within our range of accomplishment or of uh, awareness, because it is being accomplished whether you're aware of it or not. But if this is not yet feasible, we are content and even more than satisfied to learn how such a day can be achieved. If we give way to, dis to a disturbance, let us learn how to dismiss it and return to peace. And how do we dismiss it? Well, these lessons are a nice way. Just go put your mind on, on, on the lesson. Uh, if it's a particularly difficult one, well, then read a little bit. Help your, give your mind something to focus on. Uh, certainly apply forgiveness. Remind yourself that uh, give up what comes before you. Um, Forgiveness recognizes what you thought your brother did to you has not occurred. You know, give yourself some of those little ideas that kind of help you get beyond it and return to peace. And if nothing else, just be still and quiet. <laughs> that works just fine. If we give way to a disturbance, let us learn how to dismiss it and return to peace. We need but tell our minds with certainty. The stillness of the peace of God is mine and nothing can intrude upon the peace that God himself has given to his Son. And the prayer says, Father, your peace is mine. What need have I to fear that anything can rob me of what you would have me keep? I cannot lose your gifts to me. I cannot lose your gifts to me. And so the peace you gave your Son is with me still, in quietness and in my own eternal love for you. The stillness of the peace of God is mine. The stillness of the peace of God is mine.